Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today we continue the trap series right here, BusyWorksBeats.com slash trap. Today we're going to focus on Drake's Scorpion uh, album. It's a great album. Um, I love the production. I love the style of music. It's very minimalistic. And I think we can learn a lot from the producers and everybody involved. So firstly, the track I'm going to reference is called Mob Ties. And the producers listed are Alan Ritter and Boy Wanda. Now, there was a lot of people involved, so forgive me. That's all title. That's all the information title gave me, so I'm going off of that. But shout out to the whole, everybody involved in every song created uh, through OVO and through Drake and everybody. Shout out Boy Wonder, FL Gang. All right, so what we're going to get into is, again, this channel is not about remakes. This channel is definitely not about remakes. We're not here to just be cookie cutter like everybody else who would just clone everything everybody else is doing. That's not our purpose. Here at BusyWorksBeats.com, we're going to show you the techniques these producers bring to the table and show you why they're great, show you why they stand out from everybody else. So I learned a lot from this record. For example, I'm not sure whose idea it was, but they instead of using hi-hat rolls, they had like the hi-hat going very basic. Drake has done that before, especially, you know, in OVO area. Majid Jordan has done that before. Very minimalistic kind of retro approaches to drums. But... They modernized it by adding a basically a, a kick roll, not a hi-hat roll, but a kick roll. I thought that was very unique. Instead of using hi-hat rolls, they used a kick roll. So that's like that's how genius producers think. They don't think inside the box. They'll say, okay, if everybody else is doing a hi-hat roll, let me do a snare roll. If everybody's doing a snare roll, let me do a kick roll. If everybody's doing a kick roll, let me do an 808 roll. If everybody's doing an 808 roll, let me do a melody roll. And it just keeps so the technique lives on through all these things. But that's what separates these track so again we're not here to remake the track that is not what this video is about if you're here to just remake the track go somewhere else this is not the channel for you we're not about remakes that's because you're not going to learn a lot so what we teach is music production technique okay so firstly you want to go over sound selection so what i did take from this record was sound selection is key so what i'm using right here is the play vst from east west composer cloud again shout out to martina who hooked us up through an extension of east west directly so thank you East West for uh, giving me the Composer Cloud account. I had it before. Long story short, I bought the libraries called what is it called? Hollywood Orchestral Diamond. I bought that uh, bundle after I was using Composer Cloud. I wanted to find which library I liked the most. Okay, so I bought that. So now we're back on Composer Cloud. It gives me access to the instruments. So now they have they've updated the Play VST. If you go to browser, go to database, you can search just like in other plugins with a nice search function. So now they realize they have so many sounds. You need an easy way to search. So I'm thankful that they put this in here. So under database, you go to any, you go to type, and I went to acoustic guitar. Now we can add all these effects to make it like saloon-like or Western sounding, which is kind of what that guitar sounded like. And again, I'm not copying note for note. I'm not doing any of that. We're going to create our own melody. Okay. So let's go to the side. You want to make sure this says installed. So you're looking through sounds that you have, and you could just go through acoustic. God, that sounds pretty uh intense let's see what this sounds like okay so it's pretty bare but let's try something with a little more tone let's try the picked guitar a little more specific tone that one's a little too sitari too bright i'm only going to go through one more guitar let's try concert guitar Also, it might be because I'm playing the QWERTY keyboard, which turns it to a certain velocity. So it might be playing the highest velocity. Anyhow, let's start with this. And if we don't like it, we can always fix it later. So in pattern one, let's start with the melody. Okay, so here's the notes I'm going to use. It's A. You could just copy these. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Okay. So this is what's called a scale. Let's just turn this volume down. It's just a reference so I can see it. The reason I don't use the scale highlight is because sometimes we need to think outside the box. So for me, visually seeing it to the right helps me out tremendously. So let's just go to snap to grid half step, start building out some melody. So usually with melody and chords, you start out with your root note. In this case, I want the root note to be assumed as A. So I'm going to focus around A. It's called the tonal center. We go over this stuff at busyworksbeats.com. But let's tap out the tempo. Now I'm realizing that must have been a fast tempo, maybe 170. Maybe 160. So it's very fast. Um, and trap, 
you know, went from 140 down to 120. Now we're back up to 160. It's moving all over the place. So I believe their root note was F sharp. So if you want to copy that song, start at F sharp, but we're not copying their song. We're just taking techniques. So let's pull this up an octave. Now, one thing I'm going to do here is copy this an octave down so we can see the notes. So what people don't do is listen to their brain. Your brain is giving you the notes it wants to hear. Just like when you pick a scale, it gives you the notes you want to hear. People just aren't, they don't trust their brain. So that's why you have trouble with most melody. Okay, so it's a little, I don't like the sound. First, I can't even hear the sound because my speakers are super low. But let's pull this up one octave. And I'll show you how they got that low octave sound. What you can do, let's send this to the mixer. Mixer channel one. Let's open up a plugin called Gross Beat. Now we can add a couple more effects to the guitar, like reverb. I don't want to get too crazy with like all the mixing stuff, because then you're going to get caught up in the mixing and think, you know, you're going to take yourself down these complicated rabbit holes. Let's open up Fruity Reverb 2. It's going to turn the wet level up a bit, turn the decay up a bit. That's the key, the decay time. Because it gives it a longer tail. Let's open up Gross Beat. And you don't necessarily need a preset. And I, the reason I say this is because I don't think they used halftime. I think they used something beyond halftime. Now I would have to sit there and analyze it. But what I'm going to do is just right click a point, make sure it's single curve, snap this to a quarter. And people would laugh at me. They're like, just go to the preset. It's called momentary. But when you do it this way, you can change up the speed of the sound. So you can pick which octave. So you want to pull the mix level down. So you can blend your own slowing effect. So if you don't like that uh, octave, you can pull it down one more. And I'm using those hard dark lines, those hard horizontal dark lines. And that's how we get that lower octave. We're not programming in the MIDI notes. The plugin's doing that. Okay, let's find a different guitar. Now again, I could obsess over sound selection, but again, that'll just eat up so much time. Let's try something exotic, something I've Washburn guitar. I don't even know what it sounds like. It's a pretty cool sound. Okay, it's different. Okay, so the reverb is what makes it emotional. Also, another technique for your guitar, overlap the notes. Okay, so this is what happens when you play with the sustain pedal on your piano. The notes are being overlapped. So let's do that here. Now we have to manually do it because I didn't play with the sustain pedal. There's another shortcut you could do it with, but I mean, it doesn't take that much time to do it here. Now this really comes into effect when you have a guitar, which you can hear the overlap. This sample looks like it's a very quick pluck, so you're not hearing too much overlap. Let's try pulling it down one more octave, control down. It's too low. Also, change out your velocity. going to change out the tone of the sample most likely depending on your sample library okay let's send that to the playlist again we're making our own track so i'm going to show you how to take ideas from top records and build it into your own without sounding the same now for the reference sake i'm going to use the same drum pattern because it's a cool pattern so it goes pep 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 so we're using the drums from the Ultimate Producer Bundle right at BusyWorksBeats.com. I told you these sounds are used in top records all the time, especially the X kit. So we have the clap right here. Let's add that clap. So the clap goes on the, the three and the seven count. So it's use your metronome to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to start with the snare. Pat, pat, pat. So I love what they did with the snare because it reminds me of Back what uh, Wayne was doing, Lil Wayne. He used a lot of snare bounce in his track. Okay, so that adds a cool bounce to it. And that way you don't have to use your kicks all the time. And that's what they did in the record. The snare became the main kind of movement element. So let's clone this out. And we're going to add a kick somewhere in here. So I again, I'm not trying to copy their exact technique. I just want to show you how they're building up. Like Lil Wayne said, let the beat build. 
Okay, so on pattern three, we're gonna bring in the kick. Now the kicks they you know used were more tension kicks, so they weren't like downbeat kicks. So it'd be like So a quick technique is put a kick right before a snare. Boom, boom, sh, boom, boom, sh. So that boom, sh, it creates a low and high frequency polarity. And that's what makes it so great. And it's been used in hip hop forever. So put your kick right before the snare. And then we can put a kick right after the snare. Okay, so that's the technique. I think we need to crank the BPM up a little bit. Now again, I didn't reference the BPM to the T, so it's some it's a high BPM, I know that much. Okay, so the kicks are not, you know, it's not the downbeat kick like boom, boom, sh, boom. Again, everything Drake does is pretty much different. If everybody's making complex, you know, hi-hat rolls and doing snare rolls, Drake goes simple because he wants to be different than everybody else, or at least bring a different approach to what everybody else likes. And that's what all the producers involved and all the songwriters and all the everybody involved brings to that whole. Uh, image. Let's clone this. And I'm going to show you how to do that kick roll, which I think is really a really cool technique. So shout out to Alan Ritter. Shout out to Boy Wanda. Holding it down. Hopefully they were using FL Studio. I'm pretty sure with this high hat. I mean with this kick roll. So you drag out your kick. You change your snap to grid to a half step. And you hit control U. Okay. So here's what it sounds like. Now you can make it faster. That seemed a little slow. So let's switch it to a quarter step. Hit control U. That's too many kicks. Now it sounds too glitchy. And then I think from reference, I think there was like an 808 that hit right at that point. So it kind of extended out. So I have an 808 that's, that sounds different. And they have an 808 or a bass element that sounds different. It's not just your typical 808. This 808 is from 808 Science Drums 2. There's a folder called Abstract. Okay, or really abstract. And the 808 is called 808 Movie. Okay, so it's built using different sound design techniques and that's at busyworksbeats.com slash 808 where's our 808 here it is so we're going to play this in a low octave and it sounds like a moog but it also sounds like an 808 at the same time and that's what we, how we crafted it so we can use that as an extension of the kick i have to check my subs because my volume isn't all the way up so let's hear the track so far. Now also, I'm gonna go, where's the hi-hat? The 808 hi-hat is from the Ultimate Producer Bundle as well. All the drums are from the Ultimate Producer Bundle. Go to drums, hi-hat, so this one's called the 808 hi-hat 2. We used a clap called 808 clap, and we used a snare called light snare, and our kick was called kick punch. Kick punch, that's funny. I just realized I named it that to make a joke, kick punch. Anyway, right click, fill each two steps, add that into your playlist. So the hi-hats aren't doing a lot of crazy stuff. It's just showing you that it's a high BPM, that's all. We're using the hi-hat as a measuring stick. Oh, I was like, where's our stutter? Let's change this to pattern four. Looks like I forgot to add the stutter. Okay, so now the kicks, you know, here's where the kick starts coming into the track. Then over here, we can really add the kick, so let's make this unique. And again, I'm just showing you how they're letting the build, beat build, just like Lil Wayne said, let the beat build. So now we can do boom, boom, boom. Okay, and that can be a more active track for the kick. I'm just giving you a little idea. Okay, so let's try one more thing with the guitar before we get into the chords. Let's pull this down one more. I like this a little bit better. So that's why I said halftime is not always the solution. Sometimes you might want to pull it down here to where it's three steps behind, three beats. Now, don't be afraid also to add delay before gross beat. This is a technique I'm starting to experiment with. Adding delay before it goes into gross beat. I don't think they had delay from what I remember, but I'm going to add a tiny bit for this track. Let's make it a little more bouncy. Now, if their melody was much more elegant, it was much uh, longer. So let's make this melody a little bit longer. So just to show you the same kind of vibe, 
they started at F sharp. Now this is a different key. Okay, so let me just transpose this into this key. So we have F sharp. That was probably gonna be an E. Okay, with G sharp, we have A. I roughly translated the key, but you get the idea. Okay, let's pull it back. So boom, 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 I can't even sing it out. So again, there's so much to melody, but for emotional tracks, it's okay to make your melody longer. Some tracks, you don't want to make your melody too long. But for this type of track, you want your melody to be as elongated as it can be to convey the emotional roller coaster. So I'm gonna repeat it. Dum, bum, 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 bum. Then we're gonna change up the last note. Bum, 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 bum. drag out those notes again you want to try and find the best emotional octave I'm going to try pulling this down one more octave again I can't really hear the track just yet and I didn't mess with the velocity the second time around let's pull this down one octave Again, I could obsess all day about the sound selection. And I meant to cut the melody right there. Boom. Delete. And we still have a whole nother thing to add, which is the chord progression. So we're not done. Let's try randomly picking another guitar. American that's the acoustic. I didn't really narrow it down, did it? Hmm. mixing stuff so let's send the clap to the mixer highlight the clap just hit control l for all the sounds you're using so okay so we have the gross beat on the guitar so we're done that one steady hi-hat we got that the moog 808 we didn't add the 808 line i forgot to do that usually i wait until chords but since the melody is so defined we can move into the uh the bass where's our 808 now for this, I have to turn my volume up. I can't hear, so I'm gonna turn off my mic so I can hear the bass.
Okay, now we can move into the chords. So the chords, this is where you can be as exotic as you want to be. All I'm going to do is stay within my melody. Actually, we don't have to do that. Never mind. But for you, for your sake, let's do it this way because it might help solve a lot of issues. So the sound can be anything. It could be a sawtooth. It could be literally anything. So let's just start with the saw. Let's open up Silent. Let's go to menu. We're just going to clear it out. Not yet. I don't want to download the update. Clear. Okay. So we have a multi-voice saw. So about four voices. Detune. We're going to turn our polyphony up just in case. Turn your low pass filter on. So it creates a muffled sound. Actually, we don't need this filter. My apologies. So don't worry about the filter yet. We're going to use a plugin. Hit control L too, by the way. A plugin called Moog. Where's it at? From UAD. It's called the Moog filter. Moog, M-O-G. Here we go. And we're going to set it on sync mode. And we're going to set it on one fourth. So set the rate to one four. One over four. So it goes one, two, three, four. And we can set the shape. I suggest using like a sawtooth. Or... Triangle. This is a lot smoother. Okay, so just set your cutoff filter low. So it creates this wobble effect, similar to dubstep. And all I'm going to do is find out. Now I have to take that off so I can hear the musicality of the chords. But all I'm going to do is use the same scale. And to figure out the chord, this is why I said start with the note of the scale that, you know, the tonal center. We go over what the tonal center is at busyworksbeats.com. So at that point, you just skip every other note going up the scale. So A, skip the next note. We have C sharp, skip the next note. We have E. And I believe they just use simple triads, but if you wanted to make this complicated, you could uh, add the G sharp as well. So let's pull that over. So again, we're trying to make our own style, not trying to copy the exact sound. So let I like seventh chords and ninth chords personally. So to me, that sounds cool. Um, I'm also going to try adding the next note up, which would be B. Now, you want to triple check your chord codes to make sure this is an actual uh, major nine. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's a major chord. 8, 9, 10, 11. That's a major 7. Uh, 12, 13, 14. That's a major 9. So it's an actual major 9. So let's run that through the filter. Okay, so the question is, do we switch chords at this point? Do we do one beat at a time? You know, chord per beat? Sounds like this track wants me to switch up the chord. So let me do that. I'm going to turn off my mic, but that's the technique I'm using. So I'm, I'm looking at the root note at that point. This is why I said it's probably easier if you utilize your uh, pattern with the melody on it, because you can go back and forth. So in that case, I started at D. So the next chord is going to be D. So it goes A. D, C sharp, and then C sharp again. So I'm going to copy this so I know what the root note for my chords are. I'm going to copy that, hit Control C, go back to your silent, paste them in just so I know where our chords are starting. So now all I got to do is just do the same technique. Look at the note in the scale, D, and then skip every other note going up. And then I'm going to use chord codes to make sure it's a chord that's going to even sound good. So we're going along with the same theme using ninth chords, and I'm going to pull that D over here. So triple check, make sure it's an actual major nine. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a major chord. Eight, nine, 10, 11. That's a major seven. 12, 13, 14. That's a major nine. You can learn chord codes at busyworksbeats.com slash chord codes. There's a whole video on how to make chords without a scale. All you need to know is how to count. And then we just got to figure out this last one. So again, starting at C sharp, skip the note going up. Okay, we have G, uh, excuse me, E, then we have G sharp, we have B, and then we're going to have D. So again, check this chord. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's a minor chord. 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10. That's a minor 7. 11, 12, 13. So that's not going to make a minor 9. That's going to make some other chord. So we're going to pull that up to a 14 because it's going to sound more pleasing. But D sharp is not in our scale. So I have to go by ear and say, does this sound right? Even though it's not in the scale. So it sounds too. So it sounds tense at this point because there's a note outside the scale, but it sounds OK. It doesn't sound too conflicting. 
So I'm just gonna pull that down. And technically you could change this chord out. Now again, my music is a little more musical and lush than the tracks you would hear. Let's lower the filter a bit. Yeah, mine's way too musical. So let me turn down the mic so I can hear the music. Okay, so using the same exact chords. So I'm just showing you how you can take techniques you learn from top producers and top artists and make it your own. It doesn't have to be the same exact track with the same exact sounds and the same exact, because then you're just going to be called a clone and a wa you know washed up copy. And you're just going to look like, you know, like knockoff or whatever. But again, that's what BusyWorks Beats is here to do is to show you how to take these techniques and make it your own, not just remake tracks. And so again, I'm not, saying I never remade a track in my life because that's how I learned initially, but you want to break out of that because that's how you create your own sound. A lot of people are struggling with finding their own sound. That's why. So what is this sound here? Oh, I was looking for a vocal sample. The last thing I'm going to do is copy the chord and I'm trying to decide what sound. Hmm. I guess we could do silent again. Let's clone that. We're going to hit control L, send this to its own mixer track channel. Use the same exact chords. Now I'm gonna get, um, wait, we put the melody all in one, didn't we? Yeah, we did. So I'm gonna keep the chords and the melody together so we don't get confused. Let's just copy and paste the chords into another silent. This time I'm gonna use a different sound structure. So maybe a triangle or a sawtooth. And I'm gonna open up gross beat. Now the one thing about the Moog filter is that it's super on the grid. So what I would suggest is recording that to audio if you listen to the wow, 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 it's very on the grid. And one thing I was trying to do with the filter is use the offset to kind of push it and nudge it to the right. But it doesn't seem like this plugin nudges the delay. I could be wrong of, unless it's the envelope button, but it doesn't seem like it nudges the delay of the filter movement to the right, unless I would change the rate or something. But instead of doing all that, you could just print it to audio and just move it slightly to the right so it fits into the groove of the track a little bit more. Now, luckily, this is trapped so we can get away with quantized sounds. But nextly, nextly we're going to send this sound to the mixer and we have it on gross beat. Now, I'm not going to use the green side. I want to use the orange side, which calculates time. So we're just going to set this to actually, I think they have presets for this. Let's go to I forget which preset thing they have it under. Let me figure it out because they changed it. Okay, so if you go to patterns and go to one fourth beat, it's too much. Let's do one beat, one beat gate. So similar to like a little Uzi type of thing. So you can make this sound whatever you want. I'm, I like the triangle kind of thing. This reminds me of a little Uzi. I'm gonna add a reverb.
and now we've made our own sound. So that's how you do it, using techniques from your favorite producers. So what I'm gonna do is try and mix this a little bit to give you a better preview. I'll probably add some vocals over it. Oh, one more thing you can add in this track is a vocal sample. Now, I have the, uh, what is this called? This is called the Voices of Passion from again, East West Composer Cloud. But these are not necessarily in the key, but I'm looking for vocal effects more so than a note like, uh, you know, I'm not looking for an ah uh, or ooh, I'm looking for like a thing, like a thing. That kind of fits in the key. I can't find one, I'm not gonna stress it. Let me turn off my mic because I can't hear the, the samples.
So I'll show you a couple mixing tricks just to beef the drums up a little bit, but then I'm gonna mix it and try and add a vocal idea if I have enough time. Again, I can't guarantee anything, but I just wanna show you how far you can take these tracks. I don't wanna spend two hours showing you how to record vocals and all that, because it just takes up too much time. You know, so what I'm gonna do is beef up the kick a little bit. Where's our kick? We're gonna grab Fruity Soft Clipper. Turn the post down just to be safe. Go to your kick, kick punch, go to your wrench tool, turn up your volume multiplier. So now I'm just watching the fader when the kick comes in. Can use a little more low end. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this track a little bit, add a vocal idea just to give you a better concept. And that's how you can change how you can take those techniques and use it into your own create it your own style out of it okay and it connect yeah 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 and it connect you the cadet yeah 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 show me respect show me respect show me respect but it's your neck yeah yeah shout out my girl yeah shout out my girl got me in check run up a check think of the neck taking my shot think of the neck yeah 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 got the beef from busy works and what's life without the perks, yeah, yeah And what's life we put in work, yeah, yeah Hit me on the chirp, yeah, yeah Yeah, I got the life to gain In my life I had to go through lots of pain, yeah, yeah But what's life without a game, yeah, yeah All you clones looking the same, yeah, yeah I connect, yeah, yeah, yeah I connect, you the cadet Yeah, yeah, yeah Show me respect, show me respect Show me respect, but it's your neck yeah. yeah, shout to my girl. Yeah, shout to my girl. Got me in check. Yeah. Run up a check. Think of the net. Taking my shot. Think of the net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so thanks for watching today. It's busyworksbeats.com. If you want to continue the trap series, go to busyworksbeats.com/trap. I'll leave a link below for the video series right on YouTube. It's busyworksbeats.com.